In this sneak peek of our course all about Microsoft Clarity, we are going to dive into lesson three and the topic of setting up and using Microsoft Clarity smart events. Let's check it out. So as we have in our projects, remember if we go into our settings and then we come down to our little nav over here, we have something called smart events. And if you recall, this is basically a newer feature of Microsoft Clarity where you can, it, it's automatically detecting certain things that it thinks you should know about. Like if someone, you know, it fills out a contact us form, someone downloads, someone logs in, purchase or submits a form. Um, and so you can even come in here and edit and you can go through and see what it is qualifying as these different events excuse me, smart events, almost so just events, but smart events. So you can go through and kind of review and see if this makes sense for you. Because we're a teaching site, I'm not going to edit or change these right now because we like to be able to show those. However, if these were incorrectly defined for you, you could obviously adjust those, hide those or whatever it is you need to do. Um, before we dive into add a new event, we're going to go into the documentation because Microsoft Clarity does a fantastic job. Ooh, man, they want us to sign up for something. Um, they do a fantastic job of giving, telling us exactly what things are, like defining things and making sure that we can see exactly what it is that we can do with these things. So I always encourage you because their documentation is so well done, always kind of review just to kind of make sure that you're always up to date with the most current truth, because whatever we're showing today might be different um, in a couple of months. And you just always want to make sure that you're using the most current truth with that. And I love, love, love that we always have these learn mores or these things around here to kind of guide us through that. So again, we can kind of come in here if we want to see what the contact us one is we see that it is looking at button clicks. There's also API events, auto events and page visits. You can go through and look at those and then button clicks is saying mark complete next when courses we have all of these different things and but right now included in this this event, meaning for this contact us is all of these. So if I say maybe there's a call us and it like so like there's a call us button there isn't but if there is a call us button i could find that click and add it to this event here so we're going to go ahead and cancel that was, and then we could go into a login we can also see hey it's a button click of login um but let's say membership dashboard let's say this was actually a login button too so we're going to click on that and then we could save. So now we know if they click on login or the button click of membership dashboard, those are both of the login clicks. In this case, that's technically not true, but that's how we could go through and make sure that our definitions are correct for these auto ones that they're doing. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. Um, and your questions might be like, well, what is it that you want to do with these smart events? So I'm gonna go ahead and open this um, actually, I want to duplicate this tab. And the reason we're going to double check, like, hey, why would we want to do smart events um, is because before we create one, you might be we have to circle back and think, why do we want to create one? And so if we go to our dashboard on our other tab and we go into our filters, remember that we have options to filter by smart events. And so think through your smart events could be a way to filter. I only want to see the people that log in or I don't want to see the people that log in. Um, for those of you that might have a sales page with a login button on it, this is extremely helpful to say, I want to see the heat map of the people that um, are basically not the ones clicking to log in. Um, so you have that option. Um, you can obviously you do the and as we mentioned before, but this is the thing that you want to be able to do with it. You want to be able to filter by it. And just a side note, we do have a topic that we're going to talk about in, uh, in right after we're done with this one is custom tags, which has the similar feature where you could 
filter by it, but this is kind of usually done outside of Clarity. Um, but we'll go ahead and cancel that right for right now. We'll talk through creating a new smart event. So we can click on this button here and uh, we have options for purchase, contact us, submit form, download, log in, or start from scratch. And because we've already kind of mentioned these, uh, we'll start from scratch here. And I wish they would have a little icon because it kind of seems like something's broken, but it is not. We're going to start from scratch and we have our fun little kitty um, that we have here um, saying, hey, something will appear once we start clicking on these. So again, we have button clicks, API events, auto events, and page visits. So we can see these button clicks, same exact same we, thing we just saw. Um, API events, we can again, love to learn more. So this one is a little bit more advanced. So if you don't know what JavaScript things are, or you're not extremely savvy in a tool like Google Tag Manager or, or putting scripts and stuff on the page, I would completely ignore this. Also, side note, some of the things that you're doing he here with the API, you could technically do with the custom tag, possibly, um, or get the exact same information into Google Analytics or your analytical platform. So it depends on, you know, uh, there's other ways to answer the question if you don't want to go down this more complicated route. So just so you know that there are other ways um, to get an answer. This might be the this might be taking three lefts instead of taking one right turn uh, for that analogy. So totally possible, maybe absolutely useful for you, but in most cases there's an easier way. So we're going to go over to auto events and kind of see what is it talking about there. And so this is where we could kind of it, in it, to me, it's very similar to where if we didn't say search from scratch, we could have just chose one of these um, very, very similar to that. But if we wanted to use one of these, we definitely could. Um, page visits is another one. So um, for if you've already gone through maybe Google Analytics for basics or even uh, a, another course of when Google Tag Manager basics, either one of those courses, you probably heard us talk about conversions or key events and those type of things. And a lot of times those are based on a particular page. You actually could go through and do something very similar like this right here is one of our toolbox pages. I wish they would allow us to see the whole thing. And this one actually has the ref nav on here, which I don't really care for. Um, and so this is where we can go through and try to grab it. That's not going to be the right one. And so I can search for toolbox and we could see it right here. And so it's very similar to it, another platform where if you want to have like kind of give I mean, let's say in this case, clarity, a signal like this is an important page to me. Um, let's say starts with and I need to know when this thing happens. So again, remember the reason you want to know about these things is so you can filter. Now, I don't know if you would want to filter by a single page, but I do think it's really, really cool that we can have multiple pages. So this is just one page. I can then let's say um, I wanted to filter also this one and um, let's say that one. And so I could create a smart event for all three of these pages. So they're actually, let's just do those two. Those are both two kind of like um, not really sales pages, but they're very similar. So I want to go ahead and say next in this smart event name is we're going to call this um, testing. That's all we're going to call it. You would call it whatever you would want. Pro tip whatever you're calling it inside of Google Analytics or whatever analytic platform you're using, I would encourage you to call it the same. So if you're using our act method where you ask, consider and transact, this could be, you know, product a, a underscore ask. And so that maybe you have all seven sales pages for product a, and then you could say save. And then you're like, well, what would you do with that? Well, again, remember, you'd be able to come over here and you could go through and just create your filter for only showing product A for the people that are going to see the sales page product A. And then that's going to allow you to then remember go into your heat maps and create those summaries, recordings, create those summaries. And you're looking at all seven of them instead of having to go through each one individually. So 
that makes it a whole lot easier for you to be able to do that. And so product A, ask, you always can change the formatting to kind of match what Microsoft is already doing. I just kind of did it in that Google formatting. Um, and as you could see here with these autos, we cannot delete like what we can with this one here. Um, so that one we can delete, we can go through and edit, which is fantastic. We can edit the name. So I want to say product a ask, and we could save that. Um, and we're still in the screen because we can have another save here. If we wanted to add more, which again, super, super useful. We have that. Um, but, and we can also hide like, Ooh, this one is really not useful because I don't like that one. And we just, we don't have anything on our site. We hide it. Um, and unhide. One note real quick um, that you want to be aware of. There it is. I was going to make sure. So here again, always make sure the most current truth is uh, you can come through here. But as of right now, only admins of a project can create smart events. So if you need to have somebody else do this, remember, you can go to your settings, go to your team, we are all currently admins here. So let's go over to data driven you and see if we have somebody that needs to be upgraded over here. So I am technically the uh, member in this one for, excuse me, the teaching account that I'm currently logged in is the member in this one. But if I wanted to go grant an, an admin access, I could just switch it there. So we're just going to go back to this one here and I'll show you that again. So we saw this on the uh, previous topic, but you just go through and switch if you needed to. Technically you could switch your own, which is kind of interesting, but yeah, you can just make sure whoever it is. Um, let's say I needed Manisha in here. Manisha at homietrader.com, which is our previous parent company. Um, and I say, oh, she actually needs to be able to edit stuff. I want to change her to an admin so she can do that. If I don't need her to do that, I can just keep her at a member. So we'd have that there. So just as a pro tip for that. And that is your smart events for Microsoft Clarity. If you like this topic, this course, and you want more, you want the whole course, then make sure that you check out the Measurement Marketing Academy. You can simply go to measure.tips slash get academy to find out more if this is the right solution for you to unlock all of your measurement muscle that you have all that potential back there. So let us know if you have any questions. We're always here to help and we'll see you next time.